Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Marketing Live for Tuesday, February the 5th, 2019. I'm your host, Rob Zinkin. I serve as Associate Vice President for Marketing at Indiana University. And today's topic is marketing and advancement, colleagues and partners or direct reports. And before we tackle that, of course, a reminder that Marketing Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Our episodes offer you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. You can be a part of our live broadcast today. Just use the Higher Ed Live hashtag on Twitter. Join the discussion with any comments or questions that you have along the way. All of our episodes are free, free and easy to access in the video archives at higheredlive.com. You can take Higher Ed Live with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. If you happen to miss the first Higher Ed Live, episode of 2019. Ashley Budd and Seth O'Dell talk trends and drop all sorts of knowledge, so be sure to check out that podcast if you missed the episode. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a digital-first agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. Well, anytime I get to have a conversation with Michael Stoner, I consider myself fortunate. Michael is co-founder and president of M. Stoner, and he shares his thought leadership in a variety of places, including Higher Ed Lives, or I'm sorry, Inside Higher Ed's Call to Action blog, which he co-edits. And Michael and I had the pleasure of co-presenting at the AMA Symposium for the Marketing of Higher Education back in November. And we had a great topic, uh, this, this very subject, which is a fascinating topic and increasingly yeah. so. And we can just jump right in there, Michael, as we know that colleges and, and universities are experiencing these increased pressures in, in all forms, financial and otherwise. As we get started, why, why is this topic so relevant now? And, and why is it important to you and the, and the work and interest that you have? Well, uh, first of all, it occurred to me, Rob, that while neither of us is making a speech today, this is kind of our own little uh, assessment of, of one aspect of the State of the Union in higher ed, right? <laughs> uh, the relationship between these two really vital and important parts of the professional um, at the professional administration of a college or university in 2018. And... Um, I think that um, it's important for uh, people in the role of a chief advancement officer, chief marketing officer, to have a sense of their value to their institution, the value of the work that they do um, for their institution, and also to make sure that they're keeping a broader perspective uh, about the role of advancement in marketing and at higher ed and uh, in higher ed and to just to be aware of the fact that um, in what's a very challenging environment, both for uh, uh, for institutions, for advancement and for marketing, that uh, each of those leaders and their teams really has to be at the top of their game and work together to uh, be able to uh, bring the uh, their best work to their institution and advance their institution's interests. Um, so I think, you know, and part of our presentation, of course, at AMA was uh, the our awareness that we're at an inflection point in higher education, and uh, there are a lot of reasons why um, there could be tension between marketing and advancement uh, leaders and teams right now, and the best way forward for for both those divisions and for the institution as a whole is to really focus on doing their best work and really working hard to work together. Yeah, absolutely. And I know this is one of many topics that, that you're interested in and intrigued by. And so, as I'd mentioned uh, earlier before the, before the episode, really curious to hear what else is, is on your mind or what are some of those other higher ed topics or areas that, that you've been thinking about lately or that, that you find most interesting in addition to the one we're going to dig yeah. into today? Well, that's that's an interesting question. And I, I'd say one of the things that I'm thinking about right now is um, how marketing leaders, CMOs, can help uh, their colleagues um, 
be more effective at uh, at at helping the marketing operation on campus. So, what what do CMOs need to help uh, need uh, chief academic officers to know about marketing and branding that would make the mar institutional marketing and branding more effective? What what do uh, chief advancement officers need to know about uh, about marketing that would um, enable their the chief marketing officer to be a better colleague? I think that that's a an important conversation that can often get lost in the day-to-day -day tactical and just, you know if, even even the higher level strategic discussions um, people aren't really sitting back to say wow do they really understand what marketing is and how it operates and you know what would be a better way for us to to move forward in this campus so that's one um, the second one is um, you know, yesterday was Facebook's 15th anniversary. Um, and uh, in some assessments, that's a pretty grim day. Uh, and one of the implications that I wonder about is uh, what the, um, I believe that there's going to be an increased call to, uh, to regulate Facebook and other data gathering organizations. I mean, I just can't believe that that's not going to happen. Um, it's certainly happening in, in uh, the EU. And um, so what does that mean in terms of our capabilities of gathering and using data? And, uh, you know, you and I have talked a little bit about uh, CRM and, and one of the things that we heard uh, in our interviews that we did for the AMA symposium was the uh, importance of marketing and advancement. Um, certainly being at the table, but taking leadership for uh, an institutional movement to to CRM and uh, where the data that goes into the systems comes from is going to be uh, a pretty significant issue if all of a sudden there are um, regulations about how we can use data that we're currently gathering from Facebook and, and other social channels uh, or not. Of course, a lot of institutions, a lot of institutions aren't doing that, but 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 there are there are some that are, and um, other, uh, right now it definitely makes sense for institutions to think about the role that that kind of data plays in their um, advancement operations and other marketing and communications activities. Well, uh, if that goes away, what do we do? You know, we're going to have to be go back to the days where we're more self-sufficient and uh, manage our data more effectively using some of the, the tools at our disposal. And that makes the CRM discussion even more important. Yeah, well, you just lined up uh, multiple future episodes for us right there. So uh, items that would be a, a lot of fun to talk about further. And I, I would add to the list related to this topic, the, the um, increased need and pressure on marketing to be more effective and efficient across the enterprise. And as mm -hmm. colleges and universities look at evaluating their current marketing activities and expenditures, and again, wanting to drive effectiveness and efficiency because it's so strategically important. And often that conversation revolves around centralization or decentralization, which often implies control. And we know in many cases, structures are not going to you know, completely change so thinking about driving effectiveness and efficiency in, in different ways that are outside the centralized versus decentralized conversation and how universities build a collective marketing and communications effort across the enterprise, regardless of structure and how, for example, you could pull in digital expertise that may reside within a school or unit that can somehow benefit the entire enterprise. So. Uh, again, lots of interesting ways that uh, I think we'll see models evolve, and I know we're going to talk about that more uh, today specific to advancement and marketing. And as we know, in this rapidly changing higher ed um, environment, uh, as we talked about, the, the, the context for this study I think would be interesting to set up uh, the study that M. Stoner and Case collaborated on to con conduct. So any uh, relevant context that you'd like to provide in terms of who was involved, the purpose, and, and anything else to, sure. to kick off the conversation? 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's helpful. One, one of the things that um, we've done with CASE since 2009 is uh, we started a survey of social media uh, in advancement back in 2009. And if, if you remember back that far, <laughs> uh, there, there was a, a lot of, um, I'd say, concern, a lot of questions on the part of uh, particularly senior advancement people, but, but many um, many people at all levels at, at, at institutions about the value of social media and whether it was worth making an investment in social media to advance the the institution in, in you know a variety of different ways. So what we tried to do was to put together a survey that looked at how institutions were using social media in their advancement activities and um, what which of those activities were particularly effective and over the course of the years we we looked uh, we looked at uh, new trends and techniques within um, the uh, digital space that that uh, really were related to the use of social media or brought about by the way of social media so for example um, the use of social media by uh, uh, higher ed uh, leaders, presidents, and, C and institutional CEOs. We did a uh, part of the survey one year focused on that. We looked at days of giving and um, uh, uh, crowdsourcing uh, as fundraising techniques about uh, four years ago uh, and looked at what institutions were doing around, around those, uh, at that point, relatively new ways of, of raising money. Um, and we we focus on a whole range of, of other topics in the white papers that we did, you know, highlighting different aspects of uh, advancement that particularly focused on the use of social media or, or um, which were uh, uh, really brought forward by social media and, and uh, various um, things that people were doing on social channels so uh, a couple of years ago i began to to talk to people um and uh, and just float the idea that you know social media is now ingrained in in our communication our advancement activities it's most most senior advancement leaders don't need to be told that social media is important uh they get it um, if they do a giving day, they, they see how engaged, uh, if, if they're doing a giving, giving day and doing it well, they see how engaged people are in social channels and how important those channels are to raising visibility for that uh, part of the campaign. Um, you know, um, do major donors are using social media now, and so uh, I've talked to people who have, um, you know, who DM uh major donors on you know on twitter you know based on conversations they had around institutional tweets or personal tweets so it's really a part of life in a way that it wasn't when we started and so the next question was how can we how can we take this um, survey and change it up so that we're looking at what might be the next uh the next trend or the next really uh important uh, topic for advancement and what we decided to do I, I had conversations with 12 or 15 people who work on campuses who are also um, consultants and who are really engaged in the uh, digital and advancement space and said you know what are, what are the things that you're thinking about how how do, how do you feel about what's happening now and it became pretty clear that that the next um, uh, the, the next wave that we should be looking at is digital advancement writ large. And so we tried to put together a survey that um, will allow us to establish benchmarks for a um, digital advancement operation. And um, one of the things that we asked about was about a marketing brand, the C CEO, CMO relationship, because part of my assumption based on what I've seen and based on some of the, some of what I've heard these these other folks say is that in 
a digital advancement operation, the institution will operate as a single entity, you know, and that goes back to what you, what, what you said in, um, in your comment uh, previously, what, you know, it's um, many institutions such as the one that you represent don't function as a single entity from a marketing and communication standpoint, but to many of your constituents and stakeholders, you actually are a single entity and they relate to different parts of you, of that entity. Um, but they think of Indiana University as an institution. And um, so, you know, there's a, they're uh, not saying that Indiana University has to change to uh, its management structure to operate in a certain way, but because so much of the uh, thinking and practice around uh, digital communications really takes a stakeholder perspective as a really key element of that communication and outreach, um, it, it's it really, really important to think about the fact that those stakeholders are thinking about your institution as an entity rather than as little bits, which is the way that people internally tend to see it. So from the perspective of an outsider, thinking about an institution as uh, uh, being able to uh, influence outsiders, um, one has to understand their perspective, uh, and that is the single institution perspective. So that way of thinking and operating apparently becomes really important f for a digital uh, institution and digital advancement. Does that make sense? It, it does. And, and it is such an important point of how we organize ourselves in higher ed into these functional silos for audiences, as you said, that look at the institution holistically. And those functional silos are rooted in history or culture or so many you know, so many different factors, but ways that, again, we can be audience centric and, and focused on the constituent journey in a way that that, that is much more um, integrated. And I think it's such a critical point that is uh, critical to this conversation and, and so many others that uh, that we have in our higher ed marketing work. And really interested to hear more in some of those questions about the relationship with marketing. What exactly did you learn in terms of what that reporting line is for marketing and how, if at all, it connects to advancement? Um, well, it was interesting. We, we asked, um, we asked questions uh, about where the, um, where the, the leaders of those two divisions, um, divisions report. And I think that one, one, one thing to say, and I, I think that probably most people who are listening to this probably have a sense of this because many uh, have lived through it or are living through it now is just the historical perspective um, from what i from what i can remember advancement became uh, an important uh, uh, operating uh, division on on many campuses in the 70s and and early 80s and um, you know certainly fundraising did and i think case was formed in the late 80s or in the late 70s is that right yeah the late 70s um mid to late 70s so so um advancement f fundraising and, and advancement um have have long uh, histories on campus and people kind of understand what fundraisers do and um, understand that that model that has evolved since uh, about 1980 of advancement um, being a, being the uh, part of the administration that really focuses on advancing the needs of the institution writ large and that would be you know um, historically in a communications perspective fundraising alumni relations those key stakeholder activities that um, are responsible for relationships with the, the stakeholders who are not uh, current uh, prospective students, current students, or um, uh, who are now matriculating on campus. But uh, the idea is that once they graduate, then they come under advancements purview. Um, so it's only in about the past 20 years that marketing has been 
has become important on campus. And now in 2018, many institutions have somebody who plays the role of chief marketing officer, even though they might not have a title. Um, it's a senior, a senior person in communications who assumes the marketing responsibilities, who's responsible for uh, brand for positioning for external relations uh, in in the the, the marketing uh, in in the, their role as chief marketing officer and um, that's that's one of the uh, recent developments that has created some um, some tension I, I would say between CMOs and and chief advancement officers because um, I think probably at some institutions and I've heard stories about this and, and you probably have too about um, chief advancement officers who's, who've been a little bit uncomfortable with uh, the, uh, the, ro the role or the rise of the marketing role uh, as separate from the advancement division who wonder why that was happening and chief marketing officers who wonder why some of the things that they think they should be doing are being done by people in advancement. So. Um, I think that that has created some um, some questions about who should be doing this and you know where, where the responsibilities where the responsibilities lie. Now, we asked about about this, um, and uh, at about sixty percent of institutions, the chief advancement officer and the chief marketing officer both report to the CEO. So that means that their peers, they sit on the cabinet, they have a direct reporting relationship. Um, and at about 14% of institutions, the chief advancement officer reports to the CEO and the chief marketing officer reports elsewhere, often to the CEO, but not, or, or often to the chief advancement officer, but not, but not always. So it's fair to say that at a majority of institutions, we have the peer relationship between the CMO and the chief advancement officer. And um, the structure has been in place for two to five years at about 30% of institutions. So roughly a third, uh, I'd say. And uh, f for uh, more than six years uh, at, uh, about four, about uh, half of institutions. Yeah, the uh, the, the discussion around where uh, where marketing resides is is a really interesting one. And as you said, the the rise of the CMO. Uh, this is a few years ago now. I've done a couple of years of benchmarking data across the Big Ten conference uh, peer institutions, and one of the things I found fascinating in talking to CMOs or equivalent positions among those universities a couple of years ago was that of the CMO position or equivalent position that no two titles were alike across in different universities. And to your point with the rise of the CMO, um, that's great. It's becoming more important. It's becoming um, a position that has a seat at the table, but it's still relatively new in the big picture and still trying to find its place organizationally. And, and there's no, really no one model right now. There are all sorts of different models across higher ed. And one, one other interesting thing from the AMA conference, Ed Sevilla, uh, Senior VP for Strategic Communications at Grinzebach Glear and Associates also presented. And we had a discussion about this topic and he brought the perspective of boards of trustees and how marketing often is a function or resides under the development committee of the board. And so for the development committee, when it comes to thinking about budgets and revenue, you immediately think of fundraising and you immediately think of, well, let's, you know, that could be a major gifts officer or investing there versus marketing, which may seem, um, you know, if, it, if the discussion is around branding may seem too expensive, um, or if marketers or CMOs are not focused on being clear and direct about the impact on revenue and making a clear and strong argument about the return on investment um, that you know there could be there could be issues there and so uh, again uh, i think underscores the importance of mm -hmm. able to articulate and connect the work to to revenue which i think is something we'll we'll touch on as we talk about what we heard in terms of what the future role could be um, yeah. so I, I mentioned i mentioned brand 
And that's another thing that when the marketing and advancement discussion arises, the issue of brand and, and an institution's brand platform is, is a topic of discussion of, is that one platform that is leveraged across the institution does advancement use something different or slightly different for campaign or fundraising purposes? Any insights from the, the survey on that? No, it, the the state of the union seems to be about 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, about 51% uh, of institutions have developed the brand platform for the institution as a whole, but advancement uses a slightly different platform, a related but slightly different platform. And about 49% of institutions have a brand platform that everybody uses. So, um, you know, I, I'd say that, uh, that that's pretty interesting to hear, and it, it seems to be pretty consistent with what I've seen and heard from, uh, you know, through informal conversations. And I also wanted to touch on challenges, priorities for the respective functions, roles, and any surprises in terms of uh, what you heard regarding priorities for each area and how much, for example, how much is fundraising or alumni engagement a, a priority or a goal for marketing? Because often uh, you hear enrollment or you hear brand reputation. So where does, where does or where should fundraising and alumni engagement uh, play? Uh, have a have a role there well i i, I think they they need to play a, a major role and um one one of the um one of the studies that we looked at as we were preparing for this uh the the presentation we did at ama was the ruffalo noel levitt survey on um what's happening in advancement and the challenges that uh, advancement officers have. And um, I think it's worthwhile to, to um, just mention some of those realities for advancement because they help to put the importance of um, the work that uh, CMOs and their teams are doing in perspective. So what Ruffalo Noel, Noel Levitz found in, in their survey is that the new reality of campaigns and advancement are campaigns are permanent. There's no more downtime t between campaigns the way they used to be. You gear up for a campaign, you conduct a campaign, the gets were in, then you take a break. And, and during that time, you do some work to prepare for the next campaign. But the gap between campaigns could be five to seven years or even longer at some institutions. And of course, the next campaign would be bigger and you know bigger and better, and you want to raise more money. But you still had time to prepare for it. That's not the case anymore. Institutions are in permanent campaign mode, and that creates a lot of pressure on advancement teams. Um, also, campaigns are getting bigger, uh, and they're bigger goals, uh, they're larger goals, and they're more ambitious goals, so there's a lot of pressure on advancement teams there. Um, and they, as a result, campaigns require more resources and more staff, and we have to remember that this is, this is a time of ubiquitous fundraising, so higher ed campaigns uh, 25 years ago um, were unique in the sense that there wasn't as much competition as there is now, but there are NGOs, all kinds of nonprofits, uh, arts and culture organizations. Um, everybody is raising money, and those people are all going to the same pool of donors to try to raise that money. And uh, higher ed is competing with, within that um, uh, with with it within an environment where everybody is on a permanent campaign, everybody is trying to raise more money. It's it's just bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think in terms of of when when we we look at it that way, one of the things that uh, or three three things that uh, Ruffalo and Noel Levitz recommended uh, or or were. Uh, advise chief advancement officers about the next campaign is that their institutions had to become more relevant. So they had to show how their institutions did things like improve lives or uh, enhance access or diversity 
uh, you know, for medical research or, or for the environment or, or what, whatever, but demonstrate that kind of relevance for the institution because other organizations were doing, uh, were dem trying to demonstrate their value to capture fundraising dollars uh, for their own causes. Uh, personalized outreach. So uh, that that is uh, a call to deliver content in ways, uh, deliver extremely relevant personal content in ways that stakeholders can relate to. Um, social channels, email, of course, being being important there, and embrace new channels for engagement. So that includes digital advertising. It includes crowdfunding. It includes creating giving days that. Um, draw in so many people because they're so exciting and they're marketed so well. Columbia has done a great a great job with that uh, over the five, past five or six years, um, as many people know. So move, move from there to the, um, the challenges for the CMO, um, you know, who uh, currently faces shrinking staff and budgets, uh, rapid change within the institution, the challenge of maintaining a strong institutional brand in, at a time when resources and internal talent are diminishing and the external environment makes it, makes it harder and harder to create a distinctive brand for a whole lot of reasons. Um, you know, first among them may be the challenges in uh, c continual challenges in higher education from um, external constituencies, you know, these things that come out of left field uh, and the scrutiny of, of higher ed and the fact that technology is still a challenge. So you can see, um, you know, those four that I basically ticked off and, and those are from some of the, the uh, findings from some of the, the research that we've done and others, uh, including Case, have done, um, that there is a way that um, the the um, marketing team, uh, if they're serving their institution well, can be helping the advancement team by taking some of the pressure off the advancement team in terms of areas where marketing should be expert, personalized communications, maintaining the institutional brand, uh, making sure that that all these things are happening to a very, very high level. And at the same time, here's advancement that's having some challenges staffing for all these needs during the 24-7 campaign cycle that they're now facing. Um, they might be able to shift some, some of the budget into marketing to help take up some of the slack and improve the marketing team's capabilities to serve them and the institution better. Institution better. So it really becomes a win-win if they're working together in dialogue, trying to solve problems uh, jointly rather than, you know, play institutional power games and political uh, and have these political fights that generally don't go anywhere and are completely self-destructive. I mean, that's one of the things that I like the least about my time on campus is just, you know, all that stuff that gets in the way of doing great work. Let's let's get rid of it as best we can. Yeah, that's super helpful overview and um, painting the picture of both challenges and opportunities. And one other part of this, this presentation that we collaborated on and uh, and to, to go a little bit deeper into the conversation, an element that was really interesting and, and really enjoyable, uh, the work that we did was conducting several one-on-one -on -one interviews with CMOs, mm -hmm. chief advancement officers, along with uh, a few who advise both areas. And we both had our, our own conversations with individuals and interested to hear what some of the things, items that struck you as you uh, went through some of those conversations? Well, I'd say that one, one of the most important uh, conversations I had was with a uh, chief advancement officer who's been at, at two major institutions in the Midwest and 
uh, when I spoke to him, he was at a, a, an institution with a, a really, really highly regarded uh, CMO who's done a lot of great work to repos reposition their institution and uh, really raise the quality of uh, the brand, uh, the institutional brand and positioning. Um, and one of the things that that he said, we 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 talked about a lot of this stuff, and you know, as I I know. Um, you and I both asked some some of the same questions around, you know, um, should should the CMO uh, and the CAO uh, report to the CEO? How, what what's what it's like thinking about re them reporting to each other in some configurations? And he kind of laughed at that. Um, you know, the reality is that uh, in in our world right now, advancement has a portfolio of uh, re a revenue portfolio that marketing doesn't have the way it's structured at most institutions. There are some uh, institutions where marketing does have a revenue generating role and a major one, but but at most institutions it doesn't work that way. But one of the points that he made, so you know, his point, uh, his point. His answer to that was, well, we have a revenue generating role and marketing doesn't, so it's hard for me to imagine reporting to the chief marketing officer. Um, but, the, but the point that he made uh, uh, in, uh, in contrast to that is that he said, you know, if I didn't have a great CMO as my partner, I would have to do that work because the institutional brand and the positioning that they developed and then we developed together as we went into a campaign is so critical for my work uh, that that I just have to do it. So you know, for, from his point of view, having having that highly effective partner in place was was worth so much. Uh, because he was really focusing then on generating revenue and raising money as part of his campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's an important point as well. The the importance of the partnership and being close partners, regardless of what it looks like from an organizational right. standpoint and having alignment with the president. I spoke with one chief marketing and communications officer who actually reports to a senior vice president for advancement and this person talked about that worked really well. The uh, officer was part of the president's cabinet, but reported up through the senior VP for advancement and said that they have a great partnership um, and work well together. They're all uh, aligned 100% with the president. And actually, the connection with advancement provides the needed leverage and provides the needed budget for large scale image building activities that, that benefit the entire institution, especially advancement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, 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 that's right. And, uh, you know, I think it's, um, I don't like people to get hung up on, on the reporting relationship, uh, you know, particularly in the marketing side, if you are an effective CMO, that's your role, whether it's, whether it's your title, and you have access to the uh, institution CEO, and you can influence her, she listens to you. It's less important to me where you report because in effect you you can make the case that you need to make about resources or the institutional brand or whatever it is that that you need to be heard about you can be heard mm -hmm. well th on that topic thinking about the the role how do you see the cmo role continuing to evolve and and whether that's related to portfolio or perhaps reporting structure or or overall impact to the institution. Well, I th I, th I think um, it it is a time uh, for CMOS to be really sure that they are um, doing everything that they can to um, uh, elevate. Um, sorry, <laughs> I was I, I was looking for the right word, but I think elevate is is really a good word to elevate their institution's brand. I think that's that's really really important. It's critical, and um, to help their senior colleagues uh, understand how important it is to keep working the brand and making sure that it continues to stay as strong as it possibly can. So that's one. The second is in. Uh, 
to make sure that the institution is as effective as it possibly can be in the digital space. And, you know, some of the, one, one, one example of that is, is, uh, the, is the website to make sure that the website is, is highly functional from a user experience perspective, um, to make sure that, uh, digital channels like, um, like social media are really robust, uh, to really think through, uh, email communications with key stakeholders and make sure that, uh, those uh, um, those communications are moving toward personalized communications um, and uh, and stepping back from that a little bit uh, those are you know those are pretty significant um, sort of shorter and medium term challenges a longer term challenge is the whole discussion around CRM and I think that's a really important conversation to begin um, and the chief marketing officer should own that conversation or co-own it should be a very influ influential voice at the table around that conversation and help um, help colleagues to understand how important it is for the institution longer term it's also a hard problem to solve because you have to get so much uh, so much buy-in to make it happen and there's probably going to be some change in some institutional processes it's expensive but um, it needs to it needs to begin and it, it the conversation should begin sooner rather than later mm -hmm. and in a few of my conversations and i know it came up in yours as well the thought that the the future of the cmo role could evolve and and could potentially lead a, a larger, broader portfolio that includes uh, fundraising, advancement, development, that the fact that marketing often has uh, a broader view of the institution as working across constituent groups and potentially could become, as my colleague here at Indiana University, JT Forbes mentioned, a, a chief revenue officer. Uh, another, another term that was mentioned was a chief strategy officer that the CMO has a has a great opportunity to evolve into that type of role because of the the pressures that that you mentioned earlier that are increasing on institutions that there is such a, a, a increased and apparent need for strategy of you know knowing our our various audiences of knowing the market of knowing exactly what's coming down the road and that marketing is best positioned to provide that type of leadership and that type of strategy and so that could be a uh, uh, an opportunity to to help the university in in more ways and bigger ways than is typically the case at, at institutions now. Yeah, that, that that's right. So, in in closing, as we uh, again look ahead and perhaps put a bow on the topic of of advancement and marketing working together, what advice would you have, Michael, for those of us in marketing on? how we should be working together better or how we could strengthen the partnership between advancement and marketing. Well, I, th I think it's important to, to um, have a, a really, really uh, good relationship with the uh, chief, with, with you know, many people across the institution, but particularly with the chief advancement officer. And um, I think, you know, op open, honest uh, and frank communication um, with that person uh, is a really important foundation for uh, some uh, some work uh, together around some of the things we've been talking about. Uh, you know, uh, my one of the things that I um, often say, and I included it in our presentation because I think it's it's so important, is you know, cultivate humility. Um, that uh, it's really important to be humble, listen, and question your perceptions, particularly when you uh, just be believe that you're right um, and uh, can't can't get out of yourself uh, to listen to the other person's perspective. Uh, it was pointed out to me that that's a that's very valuable in in life in general, but it's certainly important in terms of. Um, the C, the chief advancement officer CMO relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think in addition to the the points that that you made about marketers CMOs knowing 
digital and and making sure your teams are mastering uh, all things digital and and of course CRM plays a role in that but really understanding fundraising as as deeply as possible and and beyond just annual giving but uh, the the art and science of uh, philanthropy and, and that type of work and much like we want all of our colleagues on campus to we, we think they're all marketers uh, the same holds true for for fundraising everybody's a fundraiser we want everyone to uh, understand to value marketing and fundraising and see their and see their role in so uh, when we better understand all aspects of, of advancement and and the work that our fundraising colleagues do, we we can be better at, at, at the work that we do and partnering and, and supporting them. And and one of the things that we talked about during our, our presentation, an easy way to, to do that, or at least a starting point, is making a gift. And all CMOs are already supporting their institution, but right. first and foremost, give to your give to your college or university. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, I I think I think that's really an important point because part of uh, one, one, one of the challenges is uh, really understanding what fundraising at a college or university is all about. And it's a little bit different um, many times than it is in arts and culture or other kinds of organizations. So if you've, if you've worked in an organization like that and you're now in higher ed, you can't assume that, the fundra that fundraising is the same. Yeah, absolutely. Well, any, anything, Michael, that we missed or or didn't cover that you wanted to touch on? Uh, I can't. I can't think so, Rob. It's, it's always okay. it's always great to uh, to talk with you, though. So, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Excellent. Always a pleasure, Michael Stoner. So, thanks so much. Appreciate your time and expertise today. Thanks, as always, to M Stoner, which produces High Red Live and makes these episodes possible. I'm Rob Zinkin. Thanks again for tuning in to Marketing Live on the Higher Ed Live Network.